Kanchana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Darine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Recording in progress Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Can I be can I get to share the screen? Yes I made you copies. Okay. Okay. All right. So here we are. We were hearing about uh, Lord Krishna, and we were hearing how Lord Krishna doesn't grow old. <laughs> And we heard about Lord Krishna having many forms. But Krishna is the supreme, the original form. All right, so Srila Prabhupada is talking now about the Vedas. He said, originally there was only one Veda and there was no necessity of reading it. Mm. The people would go and hear from the brahmanas. The brahmana would read the Veda to them, they would hear it, but they would only hear it one time. Yeah, it said the Vedas are meant to be read by Brahmanas. And other people who want to hear the Vedas, they have to hear it from the Brahmanas. So, originally there was only one Veda, now there's four Vedas. The one Veda was divided into four. Mm -hmm. This Ishopanishad is actually from the Yajur Veda. Mm. Different topics are in, in different Vedas. So Prabhupada says, people were so intelligent in the past, people were so intelligent and had sharp memories. By once hearing from the lips of the spiritual master, they would understand. And they would immediately grasp the whole purport. But 5,000 years ago, Vyasadeva put the Vedas in writing for the people in this age. 
ได้นําเอาพระเวทได้ได้เขียนพระเวทเป็นลายลักษณ์อักษรขึ้นมาเพื่อให้บุคคลในในยุคนี้สามารถศึกษา Because Vyasadev knew Kali Yuga was beginning, so things would be different. So Vyasadev knew that eventually the people would be short-lived, and their memories would be very poor, and their intelligence would not be very sharp. So this is mentioned in the first, very first chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the, there it's mentioned how in the Kali Yuga. People live a short life. Lord Krishna was on the planet for 120 years. He was still like a young man. But that was before Kali Yuga. And with Kali Yuga, then people, if they live to be a hundred years, they're very old. We'll think, oh, he's very great, he's a hundred years old, a long life. But in the, in the yuga before Kali Yuga, in the Treta Yuga, people lived 1,000 years. And before that, in the Treta, in the, in the, oh, oh no, Dwapara Yuga, they lived 1,000 years. The yuga before Kali Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, and then after, before Dwapara Yuga, then Treta Yuga, they lived 10,000 years. And then in the Satya Yuga, the golden age, people could live 100,000 years. The people could live a very long life because they were very religious and pious, so they had a long life. But here in the Kali Yuga, we're very sinful and we're not very pious, so we live a short life. But it's not so important how long you live. What's important is what you do when you're here in this world. Mm -hmm. So the tree lives a long life, but that's not very good to live like a tree. There are some trees thousands of years old, but what's the good? You stand like a tree. And then uh, Lord Chaitanya was not in the world very long. long Lord Chaitanya left the world when he in, after 48 years. But Lord Chaitanya did wonderful things in the world. 
ต่พระองค์เจ้าจะเตนยาเนทรงสั่งทรงทำในสิ่งที่น่าสนใจมากมายหลายอย่าง And the same with Shankaracharya. He was in the world only 32 years. But he was very influential. He did. He wrote wonderful things. He did many important things. So it's not so important how long you live, but it's very important what you do while you're here. So in the Kali Yuga, people don't live a long time, and they have poor memories. They can't remember anything. So that's why everything had to be written down. But before Kali Yuga, people didn't write things down. There were no books before Kali Yuga. People would remember just by hearing. They they would come to this home of the spiritual teacher. They would stay in his ashram, and he would talk to them and tell them all the knowledge of the scriptures. So people in the Kali Yuga have poor memories, and they're also lazy in the Kali Yuga. People don't work very hard; they're quite lazy. We ask them come to the temple. They say, "Oh no, I have no time. Oh, it's too far." And we ask them read the book. They say, "Oh, I cannot read the book. No, too much. No time." But they have so much time to talk nonsense and to go to cinema and do all that nonsense thing. And also, a very important point about Kali Yuga is people are always disturbed in their minds; they're not peaceful. Mm. Therefore, Shri Vyasadeva had to write down the Vedas for people in the Kali Yuga. So Shri Vyasadeva thought. Therefore, let me teach this Vedic knowledge in writing. The, he divided the Veda into four: Rig, Sama, Atarva, and Yajur. Atarva. Yajur. Then he gave the charge of the Vedas to his different disciples. So then he thought of the less intelligent class of people. Means people like women and sudra and dwijapandu. 
ประเภทอย่างเช่นผู้หญิงสูตรหรือว่าผู้มีปัญญา Sudra means the laborer, the worker, and not very well educated, no spiritual knowledge. Sudra หมายถึงกลุ่มผู้ใช้แรงงานที่ไม่ค่อยมีสติปัญญามากนัก And Dwija Bandhu means one who is a friend of the Brahmana. Dwija Bandhu เนี่ยหมายถึงผู้ที่เป็นเพื่อนของบรามนา He's born in the Brahmana family, but he's not a Brahmana. เขาเนี่ยเกิดในครอบครัวของบรามนาแต่ว่าไม่ได้เป็นไม่ได้มีคุณสมบัติในการเป็นบรามนา So Srila Prabhupada writes, he he meaning Vyasadev. He considered the women class, and the sudra class, and the worker class, and the dvija bandhu. Dvija, he considered all of it. He, he thought about all of these people. ก็คือวิยาสเดฟเนี่ยท่านก็คิดถึงบุคคลเหล่านี้คิดถึงผู้หญิงคิดถึงคนที่เกิดในวันนักธรรมแต่ไม่มีคุณสมบัติ So Dwija Bandhu means born in a high family, but who are not properly qualified. Dwija Bandhu เนี่ยหมายถึงบุคคลที่เกิดในครอบครัวที่สูงส่งแต่ว่าไม่มีคุณสมบัติ Just like your father may be a doctor, but it doesn't mean that you are also a doctor just because your father is a doctor. Or your father may be judge in the court. It doesn't mean you can also be judge. So your father is a brahmana. It doesn't mean because your father is a brahmana, you are also brahmana. Of course, you can become a brahmana, but you have to train. You have to get the education, and you have to study. Then you have to become qualified. Just like you can become a doctor, but you have to study. You have to go to college. You have to study. You have to take the course and do the exams. You have to pass. So you want anybody can become a brahmana, but they have to be first of all they have to be initiated by a qualified guru, then they have to be trained. So Prabhupada said, a man. A man who is born in the family of a brahmana, but is not qualified as a brahmana, is called a dvija bandhu. So for these persons, for these dvija bandhus, Sri l a v i a s a d e v compiled the Mahabharata. Called the history of India, and he also compiled the eighteen Puranas. So the Brahmanas, the, the those who are real Brahmanas, they study the four Vedas. But if somebody is not a real brahmana, then he has to study the Mahabharata and the Puranas. And there are eighteen Puranas, six Puranas for people in the mode of goodness, 
six for people in the mode of passion and six for people in the mode of ignorance. So we have to understand there are different kinds of people. Some people are in the mode of goodness, some people are in the mode of passion, and some are in the mode of ignorance. So the Prabhupada then said, the, the, these, the Puranas and the Mahabharata, he said, these are all part of the Vedic literature. And of course, there's also the four Vedas and the Upanishads, which are part of the Vedas. And there's, a, there's many Upanishads, 108 Upanishads and four Vedas. And the Upanishads are in the Vedas. And the Mahabharata and the Puranas, they're all Vedic literature. So we are studying, we are studying the Upanishads, the Sri Ishopanishad, which is the most important of all the Upanishads. So Vyasadev summarized all the Vedic knowledge for scholars and philosophers in what is called the Vedanta Sutra. And so Vedanta Sutra is a very famous book. Many people, they like to read this Vedanta Sutra. So it, it was written by Vyasadeva and he summarized all the Vedic knowledge there, put it all in the Vedanta Sutra. So Veda Veda means knowledge and Anta means the end. So Vedanta means the end of knowledge. So the end of knowledge, the end of knowledge is to know Krishna. And when it's Vedanta Sutra, then Sutra means it's, it's condensed, it's put in a very short form. Just like you can get tins of milk, condensed milk, it's in a tin and it, it's condensed milk. All the water is cooked off of it. So the milk becomes very thick and creamy. It's very delicious. You get a tin of condensed milk, you know, it's, it's very nice. Very sweet and tasty. So Vedanta Sutra is the knowledge of the Vedas put in a very short form. 
าจารย์คำว่าเวดานตสุตรเนี่ยก็หมายถึงบทสรุปของความรู้ที่ได้รวบรวมมาอยู่ในรูปแบบทิศสั้น So the problem is when you make it very short, then it's difficult to understand. So people, the the Mayavadis, they like to speculate. Mayavadi sannyasis, they will read the Vedanta and try to understand the meaning. But s h r i l a v y a s a d e v he wrote a commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, and his commentary on the Vedanta Sutra is Srimad Bhagavatam. So we want to understand the Vedanta Sutra. You just read Srimad Bhagavatam. All right. We'll read more. So Vyasadev personally wrote the Vedanta Sutra under the instruction of Narada Muni, his Guru Maharaj. But still, he was not satisfied. So Vyasadev wrote so many books, but he was not satisfied. And then his guru came and told him why. So there's a long story described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Vyasadeva was not satisfied even after compiling many Puranas and Upanishads, and even after writing the Vedanta Sutra. Then his spiritual master Narada instructed him and told him, "You explain the Vedanta Sutra." Mm. So Vedanta means the ultimate knowledge, and the ultimate knowledge is Krishna. Krishna says through all the Vedas that one has to understand Him. Hmm. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says in the fifteenth chapter, fifteenth verse, "Vidais c h a s a r v e r a h a m eva vidya." Krishna says, uh, also he said, "Vidanta krit veda vid eva chaham." Krishna says, "I am the compiler of the Vedanta Sutra." And I am the knower of the Vedas. So the ultimate objective is Krishna. So this is explained in all the commentaries. On the Vedanta philosophy. So we, g o d i y a Vaishnavas, we are called the g o d i y a Vaishnavas. We have our commentary on Vedanta philosophy, which is called the Govinda b a s h y a by Baladeva Vidya Bhusana. พวกเราพวกเราเนี่ยจะรู
จักกันในนามของโกเดียเวชนาบะซึ่งเราเนี่ยจะศึกษาหรือว่าปฏิบัติเราจะศึกษาในส่วนของภายใต้ภายใต้ผู้ที่เขียนพระเวกก็คือคนที่ชื่อว่าโกวินดาบาชจ And Ramanuja, he has a commentary, and Madhvacharya also has one. So the version of Sankaracharya is not the only commentary. There are many Vaishnava commentaries. But because the Vaishnavas did not present the first Vedanta commentary, people are under the wrong impression that Sankaracharya is the only Vedanta commentary. So Vyasadeva himself wrote his commentary on the Vedanta in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. And the Srimad Bhagavatam begins the first words of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Are the same as the first words of the Vedanta Sutra. Janmat yasya yataha, janmat yasya yataha. That janmat yasya yataha is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. So the Vedanta Sutra hints; it it gives an indication about what is Brahman, what is the absolute truth. The Vedanta Sutra is the first part. It is the first part of Brahman, and the highest truth is what is Brahman. The absolute truth is that from whom everything emanates. Right. So everything comes from the absolute truth. In other words, the absolute truth means that it's more than God. It's higher than God because there are many gods. We can say, oh, the god of rain, the god of wind, or another god, but the absolute truth is even higher than God because the absolute truth means everything comes from Him. So the the commentary that it says uh, this commentary written by the Govinda Basha that is a summary. But that summary is explained in detail in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So then, Prabhupada asks a question. He said, "If everything is emanating from the absolute truth." Then what is the nature of the absolute truth? All right. Everything is coming from the absolute truth. So what is it? Is it is it a per is it a light or is it an energy or is it a person or what? So Prabhupada tells us the absolute truth. It, it must be consciousness. 
ี๋ยววันอธิบายต่อบอกว่าสัจธรรมสูงสุดนี้เนี่ยจะต้องมีจิตสำนึก So the absolute truth is not something dead. It's not just something like dead matter. It has life. It has consciousness. And the absolute truth is also self-effulgent. We we depend on the light from the sun and the moon. But the absolute truth, he is self-effulgent. He has his own effulgence. He has his own. The own. The light is coming from him. Mm. So, uh, we develop our consciousness and our knowledge. By getting knowledge from others. But the absolute truth, he doesn't depend on others. He has all the knowledge himself. So the whole summary of the Vedic knowledge is the Vedanta Sutra. And the Vedanta Sutra is explained by Srila Vyasadeva. Srila Vyasadeva wrote the Vedanta Sutra, and then he explained the Vedanta Sutra. When he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada says, if you are actually interested, if you are serious to actually understand Vedic knowledge, then you have to hear. The Bhagavad Gita, then the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. So everything is there. All the Vedic knowledge is there in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the primary knowledge, and the Srimad Bhagavatam is the more advanced knowledge. Okay, now I'm going to show you this PowerPoint presentation. Can you see the PowerPoint? Archana, are you able to see the PowerPoint? I can see. I can see, Guru Maharaj, but it's uh, it's not coming properly. Yeah, I haven't started it yet. Uh, Mm. 
not getting it. I have to stop. Let me... Wait, I'll, I'll have to close it for a minute and come back. Okay, ready. Recording in progress. Okay, I think I got it now. Wait. Can you see it now? Ah, uh, no, Gurmash. Huh? Oh, wait, I didn't open this. Uh, sorry, I have to do. I have to open that. Yeah. Now? Yes. Now we can see it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So here we go. We're doing, we're on lesson one, the introduction. Today we have finished the introduction. Next class, next week, we'll go on to lesson two, the invocation. And then we'll do the other mantras. Okay? So lesson one today, introduction. We talked about these things. Pramana. Proof. And we said there were three proofs. There was first of all pratyaksha, direct sense perception. Archer. Okay. โอเคนะอันนี้ก็จะเป็นเอ่อบทเรียนนะคะที่เราจะเรียนกันในส่วนแรกเนี่ยจะเป็นในส่วนของคํานําที่เราเรียนก่อนนะซึ่งเราเร
So, one man here, you see this man here, he's got his hands on the side of the elephant. And they asked him, what's it like? He said, it's like a big wall. It's a big wall. And here this one man here, he's got the leg. And he's holding the leg and they ask him, what's the elephant like? He says, it's like a tree. And then this one man over here, he's got the tail of the elephant. And they asked him, what's the elephant like? He said, oh, it's like a rope, like a rope here. And then this one man on the top of the elephant, he's holding the ears of the elephant and they asked him, what's it like? He said, oh, it's like an axe, like this axe here. And then this one man here, he's got the tusks. And they ask him, what's it like? He said, oh, it's like an arrow. And this one man down here, he's got the trunk of the elephant. And they asked him, what's it like? He said, like a snake. So are they wrong or are they right? Well, they're only describing one part of the elephant. They're not describing the whole elephant. They want to understand the elephant. You have to put all the parts together. You cannot just describe only one part. So the same, the same is true when you try to understand Krishna. You have to understand everything about Krishna. You have to understand all of his energies, everything. Okay. So how to understand, we have to hear through the disciplic succession. Right, here's the parampara. On the top here we have Lord Krishna and then you have Lord Brahma coming. Lord Brahma is the first person in the universe and he got the knowledge from Lord Krishna. And then Brahma, he gave the knowledge to his son, Narada Muni. And we are hearing how Narada Muni gave, his, gave that knowledge to Vyasadeva. And here are the Acharyas in our present line today. Here's Bhaktivinoda Thakur and then Gorky Shodas Babaji and then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, and then our own Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. 
บนโกรกิชดาสปาวดีมาราชและหลังจากนั้นก็เป็นบักติสิดันตสรสตีนะคะเป็นพระอาจารย์ของสิลปบัณฑ์แล้วก็หลังจากนั้นก็คือศิลปประบุพันธ์ของเราเนี่ย So this is how the knowledge is received through the disciplic succession อันนี้เป็นการถ่ายทอดความรู้เป็นสายปรัมปราลงมาเรื่อย So then we heard about the four defects แล้วเราก็ฟังเกี่ยวกับสี่ข้อบกพร่อง First of all, to commit mistakes. ข้อแรกก็คือการทำความผิดอยู่เสมอ And then number two, illusion. แล้วก็อยู่ในความหลง Number three, cheating. แล้วก็ชอบโอมีแนวชอบโอ And number four, imperfect senses. ข้อสี่ก็คือประสาทสัมผัสที่ไม่สมบูรณ์ Okay, so that's a, there's the Sanskrit words for that. In Sanskrit, commit mistakes is called Brahma. And illusion is called Pramada. And cheating is Vipralipsa. ก็มีแนวโน้มชอบโกงเนี่ยเราจะเรียกว่าริบริปาริบซา An imperfect senses karena patava แล้วก็ประสาทสัมผัสที่ไม่สมบูรณ์จะเรียกว่า karena pada patava Okay here's an example imperfect senses Oh sorry imperfect senses You see this picture here This is a famous picture So, is this a young woman or an old woman? Is she a young woman or an old woman? It depends how you look at the picture. In both, in the same picture, you can see a young woman, but you could also see an old woman. The young woman here is the hair, and there's her eye, and there's her chin, right? And this is her neck, like that. That's a young woman, but the old woman, for the old woman, this is her nose, and this is her mouth, and that's her chin. You see? แต่ว่าถ้าเกิดว่าดูเป็นรูปคนชราเนี่ยก็คือคางเนี่ยมันคือปากของเขาแล้วก็คางของเขาคือห้อยมาเป็นตรงคอแบบนี้เป็นหญิงแก่ So some people will look they will see young woman and other people will look they will see old woman แล้วบางคนเห็นเนี่ยเขาจะดูเป็นเห็นเป็นหญิงสาวบางคนก็จะเห็นเป็นหญิงชรา So both both can be seen in the one picture. So that's an example of, you know, how we can easily make mistakes or be an illusion. Just like when we look at this picture, now these lines. These four lines here, they don't look straight. They look like they're bent, but actually they're straight lines. So our eyes can make mistakes. Here also, here also the lines don't look straight, they don't look parallel, but actually they're parallel. 
ันนี้ก็เหมือนกันกับเส้นเนี่ยเส้นเนี้ยความความจริงมันมันดูเหมือนมันไม่ตรงมันดูเหมือนคนละแนวแต่ความจริงมันเป็นแนวเดียวกัน It appears like they're moving or like that there's some angle, but actually they're perfectly parallel. This line, this line, that line, that line, that line, but they don't look like parallel. But this is like the shape of it. The truth is, it has a size that is parallel. But this one in this picture, when we look at it, we can see that it is parallel. And here, everything looks like it's moving. You can, it appears like everything is moving, but nothing is moving. But it looks like it's moving. Here's an example. Make mistakes. You see, the person, the people are all getting. Well, people are all getting on the airplane, and this one man, he's going up the stairs, but there's no airplane. He's making a mistake. <laughs> oh. Okay, so a conclusion, with all these deficiencies, we cannot give perfect knowledge to anyone, nor are we ourselves perfect. Therefore, we accept the Vedas as they are. อาจารย์ด้วยความบกพร่องด้วยความเอ่อด้วยความบกพร่องของเราเนี่ยมันก็หมายความว่าเราเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะให้ความรู้ที่สมบูรณ์กับใคร
So the Shruti means the four Vedas. You have the four Vedas there. And you have the Upanishads also here. And the Smriti, the Smriti means you have, you have, uh, you have the, the Puranas here, 18 Puranas. And you have also books like the Mahabharat. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, and you have also you have the different philosophies, six darshans. That includes, like here, the Vedanta. And then you have the Yoga, Patanjali Yoga. And you have Logic, Nyaya, and you have Sankhya from Kapila, okay. Okay, so Prasthana Chaya. Therefore, the Vedanta Sutra is known as Nyaya Prasthana. The Upanishads are Shruti Prasthana. And the Gita, Mahabharata and Puranas are Smriti Prasthana. Okay. Prasthana Draktya. Vedanta, Vedanta Sutra, Lauza Rukan, in Nakong, Nadia. Haribo? Prasta. Archana? Haribo? Archana? Recording in progress. Oh, okay, you back? Archana, you back? Yes, Gumaraj. I am. Oh, <laughs> am I back? <laughs> yes, Gumaraj. You are, you are also back. Okay, you, the light is also back. You translated this? Okay, the last part did you, uh, the last part, okay, Upanishad, okay, the last one is Gita. Oh, uh, uh, Nai Suan Kong, Gita, Mahabharata, Lagon Puranas, Nai Lao Jal Rujak Nai Nam Kong, Smriti, Prasthana. Prasthana means evidence. Prasthana, Nai Pawa, Lakta. Okay, and then one more, a little more. So Mayavadi philosophers accept only the Nyaya Prasthana and the Shruti Prasthana, but not the Smriti Prasthana. So that means they don't accept the Bhagavad Gita and they don't accept Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. 
So this Krishna consciousness movement is completely authorized from Vedic principles. Okay. So we looked at the Vedic literature and the Upanishads. Why did Prabhupada publish Sri Ishopanishad? Why? Because some people only accept the Shri, the Shruti. So this is Shruti. Then we explained about three types of evidence, the direct senses, which is not perfect, and then the speculation by the mind, it's also not perfect. But we said the best evidence is by hearing from the authority. แล้วก็พูดถึงสามหลักเอ่อหลักฐานน่ะที่ที่เราจะมีสิ่งที่ยืนยันเนี่ยเอ่อก็คือการการที่เราศึกษาด้วยสัมผัสเองหรือว่า
สังกาจารย์เนี่ยสามารถนําเอาตรงนั้นเนี่ยไปเขียนในรูปแบบของมายวดีได้ด้วยนะเพราะด้วยการที่ท่านเนี่ยไม่ชัดเจนหรือว่าไม่มีการบอกเน้นย้ำอย่างชัดเจนว่าใครเป็นพระเจ้าสูงสุดหรือว่าพระเจ้าเป็นยังไงอะไรอันนี้เป็นสาเหตุ Thank you Okay Shai has a question Oh Shai has a question Yes Yes yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj d a n a v a p a n a m p r i s a k s e m a h a m b o o b e s i s e s o k o n i t u s i l a b a b u b a t k a m t a m k o m p i n a k a a j a r a พี่เคยได้ยินมายาวดีคนหนึ่งอะค่ะพูดว่าเราจะเชื่อถือหลักพระเวทได้ยังไงในเมื่อเขียนอะไรเงี้ยก็คือเหมือนกับว่าเป็นมนุษย์เหมือนกันอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะคือคือไม่ได้เป็นพระเจ้ามาเขียนเราสามารถจะอธิบายคำถามเนี้ยให้กับพวกเขาฟังได้ยังไงบ้างคะว่าจริงๆว่าพระเวทมาจากปิชนาค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ So Madhaji have a conversation with some Mayavadi people. So they said that how can we believe the Vedas? Because Vedas is being written by a human being, not by God. So how can we believe that everything is everything written in the Vedas is correct? No, no, the Vedas are not written by man. The Ved, first of all, the Vedic knowledge comes from Krishna. Krishna imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Lord Brahma. So, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. ความรู้พระเวทเนี่ยอันดับแรกเนี่ยจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนเลยว่าไม่ได้มาจากคนคือความรู้พระเวทตอนแรกเลยเนี่ยมาจาก Krishna และ Krishna เนี่ยให้พระพรหม Yeah, the Vedic knowledge is not coming from any ordinary human. It's eternal knowledge. ไม่ได้มาจากมนุษย์ธรรมดาเพราะมันเป็นความรู้ที่ถาวร We say just like when you purchase an item, you get a manual how to use it. You know, you get instructions how to use it. So the Vedas are how to live in this world. They guide us how to properly live in this world. เหมือนกับเวลาเราซื้ออะไรมาก็แล้วแต่เราจะมีเหมือนกับเป็นคู่มือในการแนะนำเราว่าเราจะต้องใช้มันอย่างไรเหมือนกันกับในการอยู่ในโลกนี้เนี่ยความรู้พระเวทเนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นคู่มือเพื่อให้เรารู้ว่าการอยู่ในโลกนี้เราทำได้ So the Vedic knowledge was from Krishna and it was put into the heart of Lord Brahma Lord Brahma has four heads right four mouths So with the four mouths, he recited the, the Vedas. Archana, are you there? Yes, g u r m a r a j I don't know what's happening. Uh, I, I'm hearing you okay. Okay, so I'm saying the Vedic knowledge was given to Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma recited the Vedic knowledge. He passed that Vedic knowledge on. We see Lord Brahma has four heads. So with these four mouths, he's reciting the four Vedas. As I said, before the Kali Yuga, before Kali Yuga, people had perfect memories. They didn't need to write anything down. They could hear one time, and they would remember everything. ความรู้นี้เนี่ยมันมีมาตั้งแต่สมัยโบราณกาลมากแล้วแต่ว่าสมัยก่อนเนี่ยผู้คนมีความจําที่ดีมากเลยเลยไม่ต้องมีการบันทึกเป็นรายลักษณ์อักษรขึ้นมาคือพูดครั้งฟังครั้งหนึ่งเขาก็จะจําได้หมดทุกสิ่งทุกอย่าง It's only for Kali Yuga when Kali Yuga began they started to write things down ตั้งแต่ตอนที่กาลยุกเริ่มขึ้นเนี่ยเพิ่งจะมีการมาเขียน But before the Kali Yuga, everything was just heard. It was. Ah, for 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 for
Yogita, what are you doing? Mataji, can you mute? Sorry, I cannot mute you. I don't know. Okay, thank you. So, Shaya, you have to understand, it's like that. It was not written down, it was not coming from any human. It came from Krishna himself and it was given to Brahma. It was put into the heart of Brahma by Krishna. That's why the Vedic knowledge is perfect. Everything in the Vedic knowledge is perfect. It doesn't get, you know, science is always found wrong. They have to change it, they have to update it. So many new discoveries come and they have a new theory. But the Vedas is perfect knowledge. Everything there in the Vedas is eternal knowledge. <laughs> อยู่แล้วไม่โดยไม่ต้องมีการปรับเปลี่ยนหรือว่าแต่งอะไรเพิ่มเติมมันไม่มีการเปลี่ยนแปลงอะไรเลยเพราะมันสมบูรณ์อ
they, they, they cannot understand God because God is beyond the mind and senses. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he said, he's never manifest. He, the people who are foolish and unintelligent, they can never see Krishna, they can never understand Krishna. So, yeah, false ego and ignorance. Okay, Yogita, did you have a question? No, Gurudev, sorry, I, will, I didn't know I was not on mute. Sorry. Okay, Sarat Purnima, did you have a question? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Asana, why not? Why? Shruti ka smriti ya. To come back, why? Smriti, lao smriti ne mi wai hai lao mi dehi ma khang nang wai. Smriti ne mi wai hai lao khao chai shruti. Ani ma pen ban nai ka. Mere lu ma yang la iya kore. Ya hai Guru Maharaj. Her question is, uh, she heard that uh, Smriti uh, meant uh, for to understand Sruti. To what? Is that uh, the knowledge from Smriti that that is meant for it mean for it will help us to understand uh, Smriti is that correct the knowledge yeah yeah woman. Well, she heard it somewhere Shruti is about the hearing process and the Smriti is about the remembering process So Shruti, Shruti means hearing, should hear from the mother. Right? Mother will tell, don't fight. Right? When you're arguing with each other, mother will say, don't fight, be friends, be good. Mother will say, and then Smriti is like the sister, comes along and said, remember, Mother said, don't fight. Hmm. So Shruti, Shruti, like it's from the hearing process, means to hear. And Smriti uh, is to remember. Mm. So the Shruti, the four Vedas, means the Shruti. Shruti. Uh, and the Upanishads are there in the four Vedas, so they're also Shruti. Yeah, so this Ishopanishad is Shruti. But all of our other books are Smriti. The Bhagavad Gita, the Puranas, Mahabharata, Ramayana, the nectar of devotion, nectar of instruction, all these things, they said, oh, Shruti, uh, Smriti. Uh, 
เหล่านี้ทั้งหมดเนี่ยจะเป็นสมิติ They're actually called the bhakti shastras. Bhakti shastra because they emphasize about devotion. All the followers of Lord Chaitanya, like Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, they wrote books, and their books are all about bhakti devotion. So they're called the bhakti. They're more modern. The Shruti, you know, the Purana is there a long time ago, five thousand years ago. เพราะฉะนั้นตรงนี้เนี่ยคือเราจะเรียกว่าบัคติศาสตร์เพราะว่าอะไรเพราะว่าตรงนี้ขับพระเวทเหล่านี้เนี่ยจะเป็นพระเ
is is Brahmadev up there supposed to be like Haridas Thakur, the pure devotee, or is it still somebody else playing the part of Brahmadev? I mean, is it supposed to be Haridas Thakur going back as Brahmadev or somebody else now? Well, yeah, Haridas Thakur, he comes here and then he can go back. If it's Lord Brahma, he can go back. If he wants, he can go back. Maybe he just wants to chant. Maybe he let somebody else be Lord Brahma. Maybe he just got, because he went back to Godhead, right? Haridas Thakur went back uh -huh. to God. He gave up, okay. gave up his body, chanting Hare Krishna in front of Lord Chaitanya. Mm. Okay, so that means the Brahma Dev that we have the position now, it may be somebody else, not Haridas Thakur anymore. I mean, the person who was Yeah, it might Haridas be. Thakur. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Goide, because I was so confused about this. I was thinking, well, how can two people be? I don't. Oh, thank I don't. you, Goide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Vaishnavi, you have a question? Yeah? Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. I have two questions. Uh, the Vedic knowledge is not given to the women, Sudras, and the uh, Vijabandhu. Uh, but uh, in this form, we, we have uh, our Acharya gave initiation to many women, and we now get the Vedic knowledge. How to understand this, Guru Maharaj? Yes, but well, when we were talking about the Vedas, we are talking the four Vedas, that's the original four Vedas. So the four Vedas, are, they're only to be read by the Brahmanas. They're the property of the, the Brahmanas, right? And so the women and, and the other people like the Sudra and the Dvijabandhus, they get to read the Mahabharata and the Puranas. But if they want to hear the Vedas, they have to hear them from the Brahmanas. So it's only yeah we yeah yeah you can read Srimad Bhagavatam you can read Bhagavad Gita you can read these things Mahabharata no? but the the Puran the Vedas you have to hear the four Vedas you have to hear it from the the Brahmanas okay but we cannot hear it right Guru Maharaj that's what the Scripture says that it cannot be given to men like that right no you, you can hear you can hear them. But you cannot, you cannot directly go and read them yourself. Okay. Okay, good morning. Yeah. And my second question is, uh, Govinda Bhasha is a commentary on Vedanta Sutra by Baladeva Vidya Bhushan. And I heard in the previous lecture that uh, because there was a... Uh, they said that the Ramanandi people, they said that we are not a bona fide sampradaya. So Baladev Vidya Bhushan has to write a commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Uh, is it like that Guru Maharaj? And is this the Ramanandi, the Ramanuja people or uh, no, different? No, the Ramanandas are different from Ramanuja. The Ramanandis are different. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The, the Ramanandis, they're a different group, yeah. Okay, but, yeah, they're not part of the four Sampradaya, right? No. They're, they're, they're also, but bona fide. Well, I don't know how bona fide they are, but... <laughs> they have something, they, they don't... Hare Krishna, uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Sorry, yeah. it's got muted in yeah. Yeah, they don't accept. Radharani, like that, something like that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we finished the Archana? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare. Did thank you? Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Nimai Sachi Sura Prabhu, did you send? Hare Krishna, did... thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Nimai Prabhu, are you still there? Yes, Maharaj, I'm here. Prabhu, can, did you get my mail? I, I, you know, I'm looking to get the first seminar that we did on the Bhagavad Gita, Gita Gyan. Do you still have the slides? Yes, Maharaj, I have the slides. Yeah, 
Yes, Maharaj. I'll send it to you um, after the class. Oh, okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, I'm, I can. I need to send them on to somebody. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Hare Krishna. Have a good weekend. Take care. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.